as brilliant as he is unknown. This James Rumsey, the most original James Rumsey, crazy Rumsey to those who didn't appreciate the inventor's wondrous mind. The most brilliant mechanical genius I have ever seen, said the great Thomas Jefferson. And why is it we know so little about a man who has given us so much? Why did Thomas Jefferson, Ben Franklin, and George Washington almost gush about this self-taught frontier blacksmith with a mind like a diamond in the sun? Rumsey would be in our school books, but for a wrong word said to the wrong man on a day in London in August of 1788. Like some prophet, James Rumsey stepped out from behind the veils just after the Revolutionary War, fully realized, or just about. We do know he was born in Cecil County, Maryland in 1743. Books increased his young mind's capacity for ideas, sparking more ideas. Frontier life did the rest. Designing and building homes, mills, and blacksmithing deepened his capacity for thinking in three dimensions, juggling forms in his head like tumbling dice. Necessity was especially the mother of invention in the Western Virginia wilderness, which daily challenged his creativity. Samuel Kirchival, who traveled extensively through Rumsey's region, wrote, the state of society which existed in our country at an early period of its settlement was well calculated to call into action every native mechanical genius. There was almost in every neighborhood someone whose natural ingenuity enabled him to do many things for himself and neighbors far above what could have been reasonably expected. With the very few tools which they brought with them into the country, they certainly performed wonders. Their plows, harrows with wooden teeth, and sleds were in many instances well made. Their cooper ware, which comprehended everything for holding milk and water, was generally pretty well executed. Many of their puncheon floors were very neat, their joints close, and the top even and smooth. Those who could not exercise the mechanic arts were under a necessity of giving labor or barter to their neighbors in exchange for the use of them. Rumsey loved water wheels as they dramatized Isaac Newton's three laws of motion, especially the third one. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. He would spend hours studying the water wheels of his mills, noting the lost power in water poorly aimed at the turning wheel's veins. The dancing water told Rumsey that a steady pressure of water well aimed at the wheel gave extraordinary dividends. And as with water, so with steam. He was reading John Desagollier's popularization of Isaac Newton's work, which taught Rumsey the new scientific ideas of a priori assumptions, designing prototypes, and testing apparatus. George Bettinger, a Shepherdstown surveyor and Rumsey's partner in a Sleepy Creek mill, gave up on his daydreaming partner in 1782, just after a year, calling it a wasted interval. But Rumsey stunned the departing Bettinger with news Bettinger would repeat to all takers in Kentucky that he, Rumsey, had realized the correct design for a steamboat that would open the Western territories. In September 1784, Rumsey recognized the incomparable General George Washington entering his tavern in Bath. Rumsey's charm and brilliance won the great man over. Washington let Rumsey show him a mechanical boat and gave him a priceless certificate of support that Rumsey used to gain patents in Virginia and South Carolina. Washington saw Rumsey move ever forward the following March with a new idea to build a steamboat. Rumsey had invented a steam pump later that year and realized that pole boats were too ungainly to succeed. 
Washington helped get Rumsey the job that summer, supervising an ambitious project to make all the Potomac navigable. With money from this lucrative job, Rumsey began assembling his boat in the fall of 1785 in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. His wife's family lived there. Rumsey saw a way out of his thankless tasks at his job in July 1786 and turned full steam ahead on building his boat. Rumsey and Joseph Barnes, a carpenter, dove into the near impossible task of building the world's first viable steamboat using just the frontier rudiments of local iron ores, lead solder, tin, the wood from endless forests, and the improvisational tricks of craftsmen from the region. Washington wrote in January 1786, I would advise you to give the steamboat to the public as soon as it can be prepared conveniently. I will also inform you that many people in guessing your plan have come very nearly to the mark and that one who had something of a similar nature to offer to the public wanted a certificate from me. On that December 3rd morning in 1787, Rumsey's crude steamboat with a two-boiler made from cut iron scrap and an engine put together by the brazing process eased into the Potomac. With a puff of steam and a lurch, it began chugging upstream for a long minute at about three miles per hour. General Horatio Gates took off his hat, jostled Henry Bender his, at his side, and bellowed, by God, she moves. Yes, Bender wrote later, and when she moved, the destiny of the world moved that day. <laughs> 